screen with everyone today. We will start, um, we'll do the Our Father prayer and then we'll turn it over to Brother Alex to do our talk for the month. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us. So without any further ado, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And welcome everyone. We'll let Alex do the talk tonight about purgatory. Alex, okay. There we go. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, I, I did this a couple years ago, and uh, and I don't know if we're just, I know it's a different group from last time, but so it's always good to redo it every couple years. But uh, I, I really went into this because a number of my family members were passing away, my mother, my father, my father-in-law, and I just wanted to get up to speed of what purgatory is all about. And uh, I learned a lot, and I could hopefully pass that along to you. Uh, first of all, uh, when we die, you have two choices. You got a choice to go to heaven or to hell. Who wants to go to hell? So, nobody should want to go to hell. Anybody that's in hell wants to be there. God doesn't want anybody to be hell, go to hell. He doesn't send anybody to hell. People go to hell because they want to. And it's, there's a lot of pride and rejection of God. God gives a lot of ammunition, a lot of information to prevent you from going to hell. Gives you a lot of a lot of uh, help to get you into heaven. So who wants to go to purgatory? Me. Yeah, we all should be because we're all going to purgatory. I mean, you can't say we're not going to purgatory. Get you got to get over that. Everybody is going to go to purgatory. So, so what does the Catholic Church say about that? Purgatory is Roman Catholic theology. Purgatory is a intermediate state after physical death in which some of those ultimately destined for heaven and who die in God's grace must first undergo purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter into the joy of heaven. You know, the thing about it, if you, if, if you but when you die and you, you're in purgatory, jump up and scream hallelujah, and uh, you know, St. Peter's probably gonna look down and say, what's going on down there? And it says, because you're gonna be in heaven. You know, you're going to go to heaven, so be happy for that. So, so but, uh, but the thing is, the other thing is, uh, I've got to say this because a lot of people don't, don't, uh, you know, uh, you know, why is it that purgatory has been forgotten by the Catholics? Because, because of two things: the severity of sin and holiness of God that's been minimized. Sin, a single venial sin, venial sin, that's unconfessed or, or, or made any sin that has not been uh, for, uh, confessed to God bars anybody from the presence of God. You know, the uh, Isaiah had his vision of God on his throne, and he immediately exclaimed, "Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a." Of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the seen the King, the Lord hosts. And Isaiah was instinctively understood that a sinful man was not worthy to stand in the presence of God. And, and because, and, and then it is mostly because he heard the angels singing, and "Holy, holy, holy, Lord is Lord of uh, hosts." God is holy, which means He is set apart from sinful humanity. Can we honestly say that we are clean when we see God? No, we can't. You know, a lot of us think that, oh, I can go to heaven, no problem. But we still have sin, no matter what. You know, the, you know we, it's any speck of sin cannot be tolerated by God. And uh, and that's, that's the key thing there. Uh, C.S. Lewis stated, you know, and he was a hardcore Protestant, 
but he stated that our souls demand purgatory. We want to be pure when we see God. You know, you're outside cutting the grass or you're jogging, and then you come home, you have to go to a party <clears throat> or a wedding or something. Do you just show up in your dirty clothes or do you get dressed, cleaned up, and get in a suit and tie? You want to be clean to go see God. So, so back again, what is purgatory? Purgatory, it's a Latin verb meaning purgate, purgare, to make clean, to purify. In accordance with the Catholic teaching, it's a place or a condition of temporal punishment. I say temporal, it's not permanent punishment. For those who are departing from this life in God's grace and are not entirely free from venial sins and have not fully paid the satisfaction due to their transgressions. And then in Scripture, we go, to, uh, we do the reference to afterlife that is neither the hell, the, the, it's neither hell uh, of the damned nor heaven. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew's word was seal and used to describe this condition. In the New Testament, the Greeks, the Greeks' term was Hades. There's a uh, I'll get uh, in a letter phrase. I'll say, even uh, purgatory was even called paradise at one time. <clears throat> the same concept of seal in Hebrew and Hades and purgatorium in Latin. Purgatory, is, as we have come to know, is today's in the Catechism. The belief of pur purification after death and the communion of the living with the dead through the prayer are found in many of the Cat Cat uh, church fathers. And the idea of purgatory, here's the thing, is the idea of purgatory of being the way it is, like, you know, with, uh, you, know, you know, the burning and the, uh, is, was born in the late century of the 11th century. It was, it was established in the 13th century. It saw the beginning of the adoption and became a Catholic doc doctrine in 1274. The church formulated their doctrine of faith of purgatory during the councils of Lyons and Florence and Trent, and the tradition of the church by reference to certain texts of scriptures speaks of cleansing by fire, like in Corinthians, St. Paul's, or uh, three, uh, Corinthians 1 Corinthians 3 15, and Peter 1 uh, 7. And the chief holiness, she had to be cleansed by fire. The uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church defines purgatory as purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven, which is experienced by those who die in God's grace and friendship, but still are imperfectly impurified. It notes that this final purification of the elect is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. You know, pur Purification is necessary because the scripture teaches nothing unclean will enter into the presence of God in heaven. That's Revelation 21-27. And while we may die with our mortals, with mortal sins forgiven, there can still be some many impurities in us, specifically venial sins and a temporal punishment due to the sins already forgiven. One thing about Adam and Eve is when they were banished from paradise, they were banished not because of their sin of eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge, but they were they could God didn't want them to eat the truth of the tree of life because they would have made sin e e eternal. So why is why is it painful why how come is that the pains of purgatory are so severe? The fire of purgatory, on the contrary, was made by the justice of God to punish and purify us, and it's therefore incomparably more severe. In the early 5th century, St. Augustine spoke of the pain that purgatorial fire causes us as more severe than any man can suffer in his life. St. Gregory the Great also said that those who, after this life, will expiate their faults by purgatorial flames. And he adds that the, the, this pain to be more in, intolerable than anyone can suffer in this life. St. John of the Cross also said this, and you can also uh, 
uh, read in Dante's Divine Comedy, you know, he, he explains a lot about purgatory. A lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the knowledge and stuff we get about purgatory comes from the from these saints. Uh, the holy souls burn with spiritual fever, a yearning for God that surpasses the heat of any earthly fire. So that we can speak of the fire of purgatory and the cleansing flames of love, which the divine charity reaches out to purify these souls. The saints experience experience this in their life already in love while they were alive. The, holes are, the souls are suffering in one of the longing and unease easiness due to being separated from God. They, they see him and know him, but they are not fully united with him. And then, you know, it's, that's why it's called the Holy Fire. The fire is a, it's a burning desire to be with God. And that's, you know, you know every, the people in hell also have that burning desire to be with God. The only problem is they'll never see God. And the one thing, one hope you can have with purgatory, you 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 have that burning desire, but you will see God. So you have to have that hope and desire and be aware of that. So what does the Bible say about it? The existence of purgatory is so uncertain that no Catholics has ever entertained a doubt of it. It was taught from the earliest days of the church and was accepted without doubting faith whenever the gospel was preached. You know, uh, and, that, and that's the problem is, is the, the Bible doesn't really explain purgatory as being totally in fire, but they kind of allude to it. You know, Jesus uh, didn't really talk about it, but he did say, teach about the importance of forgiveness. And he gives an example of the king that forgave the, the one slave his, his debt. Then that slave went out and demanded more money, uh, payment from one of his other uh, slaves, and then the king punished him. And he called him a wicked servant, and, then, and said, I forgave you for your debt, but because you besought, besought me, and you should not have had mercy on your fellow servant, as I had mercy on you. And in your anger, uh, the Lord delivered him to the jailers and said, till he should pay, he, he was put in prison until he should pay all his debt. I don't know how that explains purgatory, but but Jesus didn't put him in hell. He put him in a place where he had to pay his debt in this in his parable. Um, the Saint Luke in the Gospel of the Lord challenges his followers to make peace with one another. The the thing is is that we should forgive everybody. You shouldn't you should not hold grudges or you know forgive and you should forgive people. And Jesus says, I tell you. Never get out, get out of here until you pay. Uh, you know, you know, forgive your people. But I tell you this: you will never get out of uh, uh, this penance until you pay the last copper. And that was Luke at twelve fifty nine, and Matthew five twenty six. There's one sin that will not be forgiven, and Jesus says that, and that's a sin against the Holy Spirit, and uh, and it says that either in this age or that age. It will not be forgiven ever. So I don't know what the sin of the Holy Spirit is. Uh, I could imagine that it's denying God. And the Pharisees were uh, you know, uh, saying Jesus was con uh, convert, uh, you know, healing people through the, the power of the devil. And he said, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So maybe that's what it is. You don't want to, you know, uh, you know, blaspheme the Holy Spirit and, and and definitely you don't want to say, I don't believe in God. Now the Blessed Mother, is the, she's the most powerful intercessor for the souls of purgatory. She's interceding and offering our prayers to God unceasingly. St. Bernardine of Siena said, through her prayers and her applications of her own merits, the Virgin has the power of freeing souls, especially her devotees from purgatory. And the Blessed Mother says, my mercy does not want this purgatory, but justice demands it. One thing I can say is that uh, the Blessed Mother every year uh, during the Feast of Immaculate Conception has uh, uh, releases people from purgatory. So hopefully you're standing in the line and waving your hand 
and hopefully you can be one of those people. Sister Faustina, Saint Faustina visited Purgatory with her guardian angel and saw the flames, and we should pray for. And she said we should pray for the souls. And the divine mercy is an important prayer, and she created that prayer for that. She testified that Blessed Mother is, is following says following God's will takes great care to bring comfort and suffering to souls that they are being purified in purgatory. And uh, she's uh, this is in her diary if you want to read that. Uh, angels console the holy souls. They inspire friends and relatives to offer mass and practice good deeds by speedy delivery from purgatory. The angels inform the holy souls who is assisting them and who is in need of their help. Then when the great mercy of purgatory, this is the stain of sin on one soul, even in the state of grace, keeps it from God's presence. But he gives us purgatory as a remedy. The, in the early 5th century, Augustine spoke of the pain of purgatory. So, Saint, here's a, Saint Catherine of Gienna gives a different, uh, she contradicts the other saints uh, of how painful it is. She says, that according, you know, the, the purgatory is a place of greater joy and greater suffering than any anything we know in this world. She doesn't explain it as being most painful. She says it's a greatest joy and greater suffering. But she gives a description as uh, that uh, that we typically think of joy as an absence of suffering. Yet purgatory is two states, and they have both integrated suffering and joy. And so. The um, the vision she saw the the holy souls of purgatory told her that they were willing to endure the pain of the purgatory to be with God. So, and Saint Paul also uh, in his uh, you know uh, in First Corinthians said, "Now if anyone builds on a foundation with gold and silver, precious stones, wood." Hey, each man's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed with fire and fire will test what sort of work each one of us has done if the work which many any man has been built on foundation survives he will receive reward if any man works is burned up he will suffer loss though he himself will be saved so what, what he's comparing uh, purgatory to is uh, if you understand what how a, a goldsmith or a silversmith uh, purifies gold and silver. They're taking all the impurities out and making it, and that they're, they're, it, it's intense heat and to make it pure. So that's, you know, that's exactly what's happening in purgatory, it's making it pure. So, and uh, St. Uh, Catherine Gianna also said, purgatory is a great mercy. This is a, purgatory is a great, uh, gift of God so 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 what you have here is that if you if you look at these these saints that make it sound like it's pretty bad but then say Catherine of Gianna says hey it's it's joyful which one are you gonna believe so I don't know I I think I'd like her her description compared to the other ones but but the one thing you have to understand is is that the presence of God will be desired and that's the greatest pain and that's the, a, a spiritual pain of fire. The Protestants and other Catholic Christian churches of the world, what do they say about it? I'm surprised to find this. Well, the Catholic Church, Roman Catholic Church, has the toughest doctrine on this, and they explain it as being a state of, uh, of uh, fire. Whereas the Methodist and Eastern Orthodox and Anglican Church say it's just an intermediate state and and you know you, you can still pray for the dead but it's just a, a intermediate state a process of growth rather than punishment you know you're, you're being cleansed but you're also being trained and getting ready it's almost like uh if if you're like getting ready for uh, sports and you're going out for a football team you're going out and you're working out and exercising and then you make the team or like you join the military go to boot camp and uh, they get you ready for for joining the army or air force or what navy and then then once you finish boot camp you get into into the service start doing your mission so maybe that's you know if you look at purgatory it's preparing you to get into heaven but you get cleaned 
and that's the thing is you're getting clean. So, so uh, the, you know, the other thing is that uh, the Catholic Church also uses where in Scripture does do they really talk about purgatory? And uh, it's Second Maccabees. Uh, that's in the Old Testament. Uh, they don't talk about it as being fire, uh, spiritual fire, but they talk about forgiveness because uh, what happened there was uh, a battle. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it later about that, but a battle where the soldiers had a uh, a, uh, a pagan omelet on, and that that was basically uh, they were being you know they were going to hell for it. Uh, but the Protestants also theology believes that when you die, you're perfect on the spot. Instantaneous act of God, and there's no process or journey or purification. You know, it's a waste of time to think there's purgatory. And then the other thing is, they don't believe in praying for the dead. They say, you know, some of the Protestants says, we have removed from our churches and completely abolished the pompous abominations such as vigils, basses, the dead, processions, and purgatory and all other uh, hocus pocus on behalf of the dead. You know, how long is the soul in purgatory? The length of the time the soul is in purgatory is determined on on uh, the number of faults that you had, the sins, the deliberations of what you've done, what you've committed, the penance you've done in life, and, uh, and what satisfaction is being made. Also depends on the suffering that you did. Then you know, and also you know, if you you know, if you really get into it, I think uh, suicide and moral sins are really critical too. But uh, you got to also understand that time, there is no time after you know in heaven or in purgatory. Time is there is no time. It's you know, like there there was one uh, uh, priest, uh, Catholic uh, saint, that said. You could be in purgatory for a thousand to two thousand years. Well, there is no time. So what? What length of time is that? So, uh, so the, the thing is, is that you just got to be aware that you're going to be there until you're clean, cleansed. So, so uh, the, the the one thing about if, if you want to look at uh, the Protestants' belief that there is no purgatory, uh, you know, you got to look at it this way. What madness, therefore, is it to, that it is for intellect, intelligent beings to neglect, take it every possible precaution to avoid a dreadful fate of purgatory? It is incomprehensible how some Catholics, even those who are otherwise devout, shamefully neglect the souls of purgatory. So, They would well be remembered that the best means of lessening our terms of purgatory, avoiding all the years, to have clear ideas, to think well of it, and to adopt the means that God offers, offers avoiding it. And God gives us a lot of opportunities to avoid it. You know, length of time and all. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully purgatory is like what St. Catherine says, but, uh, and not like what St. Augustine and St. John of the Cross say. But, uh, but for, for the Protestants to say they don't believe in purgatory and don't believe in praying for the dead, I think that's a, that's a, that's not a good thing. So, uh, you know, the, Jesus said to pray for the dead. He said the Beatitudes, just, you know, pray for the dead, you know, all those Beatitudes said, you know, prayers for the dead. Days and weeks and months pass without, and then there are days and weeks and months pass with, we don't even do anything for, People praying for him in purgatory. People don't realize what purgatory is. You know, why don't we pray for people? The dreadful pains and, and the the thing about purgatory. Once you're there, you can't pray for yourself. You can pray for everybody else. You can pray for me in purgatory, but you can't. That you can't pray for yourself in purgatory. And they're looking. You know, and God wishes us to help them. You know, because He said that in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, it also says, and we are bound by God to pray for the holy souls. And Our Lady wants us to pray for them, especially saying the rosary. And the, the one thing about praying for the souls of purgatory, if you pray for them, 
whoever they are, you know, aunts, uncles, friends, and the unknown people, they're going to pray for you when you go to purgatory. And they'll lessen your time. So pray for everybody. The one thing about it is, is you know, the, the Protestant says, you can't pray for anybody that died. They're, they're either in hell or in heaven. And, and it's a waste of prayer. Well, no prayer is ever wasted with God. Even if we, we pray for deceased people who have no need of further purification, their prayers are un, unavailing. These prayers allow the deceased in heaven to receive an increase in their intimacy of God's love and increase in their own intercessory power. St. Thomas Aquinas calls it an accidental glory. The lesson is, never stop praying for the dead. God is never undone by generosity. So the, 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 the concept of the, the, that we use on Second Maccabees was that uh, uh, following a battle, the faithful Jews were found to have fallen comrades, each carried their own sacred tokens of idols. And uh, the, uh, the noble Judas exhorted the people to pray for them and, he, and, he, and to free them of their sins. And he asked God, they did sacrifices and everything to pray for him. He was, you know, and, and, and that was well explained in the Bible and all that. So to say don't pray for the dead, the Protestants don't, the Protestants don't have Second Maccabees in their Bible. So I think uh, Martin Luther took it out. So so then how can we help the holy souls in prayer? First, first uh, means is there's a joining association of holy souls and the conditions, you know, there, I guess there's an association you can join. You do a mass, you pray for them in devotion, and, and contribute to them annually. One, the other way you can do it is Divine Mercy Chaplet. And you continue praying then. Pray the Rosary. Do the Way of the Cross. Every year we have All Souls Day, and the month of November is dedicated to the souls in purgatory. And definitely, uh, in December with the Immaculate Conception, uh, pray to the Holy Mother and uh, hopefully uh, she'll grab some of your family members and friends out of purgatory. But the best way to help the other, there's four pillars they call for helping people in purgatory. Mass, offering Mass to them, doing the Rosary, Way of the Cross, and Eucharistic Adoration. So that you, know, you do that at the, and offer it to them. There's also a Gregorian Mass. It's a series of 30 Holy Masses celebrated on 30 consecutive days. I don't know how to tell you to do that, but you can look it up. <clears throat> um, and then there's 20 ways to pray for the Holy Souls. <clears throat> the Novena, I think every November there's a Novena for the Holy Souls. There's like nine days and you and you, and then you go to a uh, you do confession, go to, uh, you do nine days of praying at the cemetery, and then you go, uh, you go to Holy Communion and do complete the novena. You offer up Holy Communion. That's the, that was, the, that's one of the best things to offer authors. Offer your Holy Communion to the souls of purgatory. Constantly having masses for the Holy, for the Holy uh, Departed souls. The way of the cross. The Holy Rosary, indulgences, give alms, the, the My Mercy Chaplet, a prayer to Saint Gertrude for the Holy Souls. When you pass the cemetery, you know, say the Eternal Rest prayer. Eternal Rest grant upon them, O Lord, let the perpetual light shine upon them, and may the souls of all faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Practice the tradition of praying the Eternal Rest prayer. Constantly visit a cemetery, do Eucharist adoration, sacrifices, offer all your pains and sacrifices to the souls in purgatory. You know, pray for the office of the dead. You can, uh, ask for intercession of the saints. The saints are very powerful in helping you with the people in purgatory. Special prayers. There's all kinds of special prayers. You know, repent of your offenses to God and spread the devotion of the holy souls. What can we do to prevent ourselves from, from purgatory? To avoid purgatory is first and foremost. Do the will of God in the present moment in all things. 
Avoid sin at all costs. So that means you got to be very saint, being saint-like. Break all bad habits. Go to monthly confession. Attend, attend daily mass. Pray the daily rosary. Forgive. I can't help but emphasize you. And I could give a talk on it, but how important it is to forgive. Jesus says, I will forgive you the way you forgive others. So if you, if you, if you don't forgive somebody, go forgive them right now. Make sacrifices and acts of self-denial. Go to Eucharist's adoration. Accept trials and pains and offer it to, to suffering. Your suffering. Avoid judging. Be patient. Practice first Fridays, first Saturday devotion. Ask God for his grace, indulgences. And then definitely uh, you know, anointing of the sick when you when you're you know, make sure everybody has a priest come that for if they're dying or they're they're sick. The brown scapular is very important. You know, the, the Blessed Mother says, whoever dies wearing the scapular shall not suffer eternal fire. And true love consists in carrying out God's holy will. So I'll conclude with this by saying the prayers that you can say. Like I said, daily mass, divine mercy chaplain, recital rosary, making way of the cross, eternal, the, the eternal father, uh, you know, prayer of the uh, sacred heart of Jesus, I place my trust in thee, Jesus, my Jesus mercy, my Jesus have pity on me, my Jesus I love you, my Jesus give me a happy death. God has given us a gift, this is a gift of purgatory, and it isn't about punishment, it's about true love. God is not trying to get even with his people out of his mercy and love, he has prepared the un his unprepared children to be with him face to face for all eternity. Purgatory is a beautiful sign of God's infinite love. The more we pray for them, the more powerful for an intercession. So get in the habit of praying for the souls in purgatory. Get in the habit of praying for yourself. Uh, the more you pray for somebody the, in purgatory, the more they'll help you. And, you know, I can't help emphasizing that as much. And, and that's all I have for right now. So.